So one of the nice things about having a second channel is I can just post random videos and I don't need to worry about having them super highly edited. So that's what this video is. I kind of wanted to talk about Cinelike D. It's kind of a profile that not a lot of people like. So with cameras like this, this is my little Lumix G85. Been loving this camera, shooting a lot with it. It shoots in Cinelike D and Cinelike V. I've shot in both and I think both are okay for different reasons. But a lot of people that shoot on cameras like this will opt to shoot in natural and just do their own flavor of the natural profile. And that is typically because it gets better skin tones than Cinelike D does. Now, Cinelike D is flatter than all the other profiles. It's flatter than natural, even when you shoot negative everything. And it's a profile that's actually, you know, designed by Panasonic Lumix to give you the most dynamic range out of these 8-bit cameras. So you can't really expect much dynamic range out of these cameras, but I think that Cinelike D gives you the most. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways just so you can kind of get an idea of what I do with this footage. Now, some of this is gonna be using my Cinelike D Pro LUT Pack, which I do sell on my website, which you can go check out. But you can do this without buying my LUT Pack. It is only 15 bucks, so it's not like super expensive. Okay, so here's a clip that I have shot with Cinelike D. It looks really good, it's on the beach, and I think that it obviously is gonna, you know, depend on what kind of footage you're grading. You know, footage on the beach just looks really good because the sun's gonna reflect a lot of that, you know, that light here. You can see that on my wife's face, it's nice and exposed, even though I'm shooting towards the sun. The sun is just right up here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the basic correction and input LUT. Now this is gonna be a method using my LUT pack. So if you go here to browse, so inside of my Cinelike D Pro LUT pack, you'll find a Cine D to Vlog L conversion LUT. So as you can see, what that did is it turned Cine D into what resembles Vlog L. It's not gonna be real Vlog L because this is just a conversion LUT that I made that gets your contrast and your colors into the same space as a Vlog L. And now you can just pretend that this is Vlog L footage shot on the G85. So because you can do it that way, you can use a plugin called CineMatch, which if you haven't heard of CineMatch, it's made by the people at Film Convert. So you can use CineMatch on this footage. So let's go find that plugin. So now we have CineMatch put on this clip. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and tell CineMatch what this footage is. So because it's Vlog L, I modeled it after Vlog L that you would see in a GH5. So I'm gonna go to Panasonic GH5 Vlog L, and that's gonna tell CineMatch what this footage is. And then we can switch it to something else. Let's switch it to, let's go to Airy Alexa Mini Log C. And now, as you can see, I'm just gonna do a little before and after. Before, after. So this is Vlog L, this is Airy Log C. And within CineMatch, you can actually apply a Rec. 709 transform. So if you do that, boom, you have a Airy Rec. 709 transform that is treating it as if it's Airy Log C footage. And honestly, this looks pretty good. This, like, you know, you take CineMatch off, put it on, and this looks pretty good. The skin tones look good. We can go and you can adjust it. Since my wife does have a white shirt on underneath her overalls, I can come here and try to get, eh, that doesn't look too good. Let's try something else that might be a little more white. Sometimes that's what I do is I just kind of like, if there's something white in the scene, I'll just, you know, mess around with the color temperature. But basically I'm gonna go, I'm actually just gonna go back and put it to what it was. So this is how it was originally, and we can check the skin tones. And the way that I do it is I go to the opacity here on Premiere, and I find some skin, and then I go here, and then I go to, I'm gonna go to my color tab. I'm gonna go to Lumetri Scopes, and as we can see here on the Lumetri, it is a little bit shifting towards magenta and, and red. So let's go back to my main panel. Let's just turn off the opacity. And I'm going to actually use CineMatch and see, since we are going a little bit more towards the magenta and red, I'm gonna try just bringing this a little bit more towards green. Uh, it's looking a little bit better. Let's try it again. Let's go a little bit more towards, I'm gonna skew it towards green too, just so that, yeah, look at that. That's perfect right on the skin tone line. That's exactly where you want it. So that's just another way that you can do 
you know, your temperature and tint adjustment. So I'm going to take off this mask and now that's looking pretty good as far as skin tones. Let's take Cinematch off and on. That looks pretty good. I think that for a G85, that looks pretty good. One thing I might do is just add a little bit more contrast. We can look at what it looked like before. This is Cinelite D with my Cine D to Vlog conversion. And then with Cinematch, boom, we have a really nicely graded image. And that's how you can do it with using the Cine D to Vlog L conversion that comes in my LUT pack and using Cinematch, which again, I will leave a link to Cinematch in the description below. I think this looks pretty good though. So now let's go on to the second way that you can do it, which is actually just using my LUTs. So let's take this off. Okay, so now we're gonna try just with my LUTs. Here, you don't need to go to the basic correction. You can just go right to the creative tab if you're on Adobe Premiere. I'm just gonna go to browse. I'm gonna go to so now we have a few different LUTs to choose from. Obviously, we're not gonna choose the Cine D to Vlog because we already use that, and that's the way that I use this specific LUT. But if we go to Ariesk, this should give us a similar grade, which it does if you look here, before, after. So this gives me a very similar grade to what we did with Cinematch, but this will just do it right in a LUT. And we can try Dabney. And this doesn't necessarily work on this footage, I'm gonna take this down. And again, it's very, very subjective to what footage you shoot. Um, I think this is, I think the Dabney works a little bit better in like forested situations or just like lower lower light situations. Something you can always do with my LUTs too is the intensity. You can take the intensity down, take it back to zero and take it up. I'm gonna put it back to 100. Let's try a different one, Prineville. This is a little bit of a lower contrast look. Southeast, this is again, similar to the Ariesque, but a little bit more of a cooler tone. And then we have Southeast, the original, and then warm film. And I think this one looks really good for like that warm nostalgic feel. Anyways, those are my LUTs that you can use. And I think that they work again, really well on Cine D footage. The next method that we're gonna use is actually using Film Convert itself. And the nice thing about Film Convert is that you can use it with Cine D footage. So it actually supports cameras like the G85 actually, and it will support cameras like the G7 even though they're not listed. So what we can do is drag and drop Film Convert Nitrate on this footage. And Film Convert Nitrate, similar to Cinematch, you gotta tell the plugin what footage you're feeding it. So I'm gonna go and choose my camera. I'm gonna go to Panasonic. We're gonna go to G85. As you can see, they have the G85. They don't have the G7, but they have a lot of older cameras like the GH2, GH3, GH4, um, GH5S, G9. So I'm gonna to go to the G85, because that's what I used, and then we're gonna to go to Cinelite D. So now Film Convert knows the footage that you're putting in there. Obviously, this doesn't look that great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust a few things. Right now, the film stock we're using is the Kodak 5207. The first thing I'm gonna do though is actually take the intensity down and I'm gonna turn off halation right now because that's what's on that's what's making the highlights bloom and I'm gonna turn the uh, grain off so I actually like this one let's see Provia okay so this one looks pretty good and you can adjust the vibrance too of the film stock so I like the the vibrance of this it's actually pulling out some of the colors the film chroma is something you, like else you can adjust. I'm gonna leave it right around the 60 mark. And then the luma is actually gonna affect the contrast and the brightness of the shot. And then something else you can do within Film Convert, which I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily know, is you can go into the color correction and do a lot more tweaks to your shot. So if you want to, you can add even more saturation, which I think I'm going to. Look at that, that looks... That's looking a lot nice, bringing a lot more uh, color into her skin. You can adjust the shadows and the midtones. One thing that's kind of unique about Film Convert as opposed to Cinematch is that you can add halation. And what's really cool is that, as you can see, all like the brightest spots of this image have a little bit of halation in them. Uh, so you can see where the halation, when you click this view halation alone, you can see where it's actually targeting. So instead of using like a black mist or something like that, or a glimmer glass diffusion that'll give you that halation. You can just do it right inside of Film Convert, which is pretty sweet. So yeah, that's how you can grade using Film Convert Nitrate. And that's just a one-stop shop when it comes to grading Cinelite D footage. You can go before, after, 
and I think it looks great. Super easy, and it takes the guesswork out of grading your footage. This is definitely good if you're a beginner and you not really want to mess with LUTs or anything like that. Film Convert Nitrate is great. So definitely check that out in the description below. There's a special link that you can get it at a discount, which is pretty cool. And yeah, I do think that Cinelite D is kind of slept on by a lot of people who use these older Panasonic cameras. I do think that it gives you the most dynamic range. The skin tones is one thing that you're gonna have to mess with, but with my LUTs, they help you get the skin tones in a lot better place because they typically are skewing towards magenta and stuff like that. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Super quick and easy, but just wanted to share it. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Later.